<laughs> well, no, you don't need it with Dennis. Too. No, I know I don't. <laughs> so you guys heard him and then walked in after him? No, I you smelled, smelled them. them. <laughs> smelled them oh, on the I river. thought you heard him too. No. You smelled Never him. Never heard he him. Walk, he walks up the bank, gets oh, in there a little oh. bit, and calls a couple times, and he comes back and <laughs> Yeah, I smelled him. I walked in. Oh, so he wasn't grunting like? Not at first. Oh. But he, he, he did after oh. I called to him. I raked a few trees with my phone and mm -hmm. called to him a few times. And then he just started going nuts. He mm -hmm. was just like one after another. <laughs> Get excited. Like. One of my favorite parts about the industry I work in is the friendships, both old and new, that I've been able to rekindle and create along the way. You see, Adrian Jacques was a good friend of mine from a rival high school down the road from where I grew up. We played sports against one another, shot archery against each other, and then slowly drifted apart as friends as we got older and life took over. As I was focused on building my business here, Adrian had purchased an outfitting camp in northern Alberta and had been operating it for a couple of years now. We had chatted about doing a hunt together, but hadn't been able to line it up until this past season. When COVID hit, Adrian had a few spots left in camp, and we jumped on the opportunity to hunt with him and finally experience the part of the world he always spoke so highly of. I invited my good friend Brad Fenson to share camp with us, and we headed up in late September to try and fill a couple of moose tags. They never did show themselves, but the calling we did that afternoon ended up paying off the next morning when we came around the corner and there stood the first moose that we would see on the trip. Things happen, they can happen often faster than the moose would. We've been trying to get to the river 
first thing in the morning. Lots of signs. There's a wallow right here. And guess what we found right at the river? Bullwinkle. He's a nice mature bull and uh, Keg Country Outfitters comes through again. Yeah. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Covert Scouting Cameras, Vortex Optics, Old Smokes Coffee, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. He's a sleeping moose. Oh, scrambled. It didn't take long though. It only took a couple seconds, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's the problem when you hunt moose and it's often tight quarters, like 30, 40, 50 yards. It wasn't very far. But he reared up and ran in a bit of a circle and stayed where there was still an opening for a shot, thank goodness. He was quartering away, had a good uh, good angle on him. There's been a pile of sign, like we knew we were gonna stumble into him eventually. <laughs> like, we've been just chasing the river, following the river down, and you can see where they come out and cross. Um, we weren't sure if they were really worked up yet or not, but clearly this guy was this morning. Yeah, you can certainly smell it in his neck and his ears where he's been working the bush. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, the rut is ready to, to fire up. We're here. We're here opening day, which is yesterday for rifle season. This is second day, and if you think it's too early, this is proof that it's not. I mean, that bull was raking those alders like he had a major he's issue with them. Uh, <laughs> he had a grudge to, a grudge to yeah. pick, so. But it's amazing how many pounds of muscle they put on their neck by working those trees, but you feel him, he almost feels like he's got sap on him. I know, yeah. Yeah, you can, oh, that's from in the wallows. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, he's sticky and stinky. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. exactly the kind of bull you're looking for when you come up here too. Like just a really good representative. And he's nice mature. Look There's at the a... weight, right? I you know. see the weight, he's a good mature Alberta moose, which yeah. is, I mean, I'm thrilled with him. Yeah. And like I said, some real character, the the way this branches out on the brow palm, the fork. I mean, look at these bloodlines on both yeah. these points. How deep they are. The, like the veins grew so deep in there with when the velvet was on them. Yeah, almost like they wanted to just split the tines. That's good. Well, there's three other hunters plus me yes we have four more moose to kill in seven days and yeah i mean i don't think we're gonna have any issues adrian's got a really good operation running up here beautiful camp right along the river it's kind of a picturesque place there and uh, a lot of area to, co to cover and the river holds a lot of promise we kind of keyed in on that right at the start figured that that was going to be our ticket and I mean, yeah we had lots of moose country to hunt this morning yet we drove probably 10 or 12 kilometers to get Too here well, just to get to here yeah. because when we found this yesterday it was like you know the hidden gem there's tracks everywhere there's sign there's wallows the trees have been beat up I mean it looked like okay here's their highway this is where they like to rut and uh, you know I've hunted the Yukon a few times yeah. I know the river basins yeah, exactly. are are used extensively by the the moose for rutting activity so. well, and you could see like like I said all the tracks coming down there was bulls coming down to the river cross and they're they're cruising and it's a place where we can sit and see you know 800 yards two directions yeah. you can just cover ground because this bush is so thick up here and there's so few lines yeah you're trying to cover ground in this country and that's what we were coming to do this morning but we didn't have to that's what we did yeah yeah After getting Brad's moose cleaned up, Darcy and I headed further down the river for the rest of the morning. We weren't set up long when we heard the familiar howls of the wolves downstream. And within a few minutes to my surprise, one stepped out onto the riverbank and was headed towards us.
Like the one right under the yellow tree, right? Yeah, that's what I'm on. Yeah. I'm zoomed in as much as I can. Hmm? Yeah. It's gone now. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Super Center, True Fire Releases, Victory Archery, Black Widow Innovations, Wapiti River Outdoors, and Federal Premium Ammunition. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Super Center, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. We're, uh, so we just pulled up to where Brad shot his moose yesterday morning and uh, we've parked quite a ways back. We're here at first light. It's really nice and cool, crisp out here. And with the amount of wolf sign that was in the area, I have a feeling that there might be some wolves there or nearby. So we've parked quite a ways back. We're gonna slowly sneak up here and uh, I'm gonna grab the shooting sticks. I got the rifle ready. With any luck, maybe we'll pop down. After we were finished butchering the carcass, we actually drug it back out about 100 yards down from where the entrance is. So we should be able to maybe sneak down there. And if anything's on it, we should be able to see them, so. Darcy. Oh my god. That thing is huge. That's a different one too. Because the first one I saw was gray. We knew they were going to be here. Brad killed. His bull moose right here this yesterday morning. And there has been pounded with wolves in here. And we knew they were gonna be on it. And so we parked the quad way up the hill this morning and we hiked down. And as soon as I walked down, I seen a gray wolf coming towards us on the shoreline. We got set, I thought he was gonna step out. And he didn't. And then so I crept down and I seen this big, black wolf coming towards us and then he skidded right out into the wide open he was headed for the carcass there was something walking like in the trees up there it was probably the other one it was the other wolf he was coming and he went up there's so many wolves in here but that is my dream wolf a giant giant black wolf we saw one yesterday morning, couldn't get a shot at him. I'm not even mad anymore. I tell you what, I was putting my crosshairs on him and he's seen us. And I get excited when I see like a big moose or something, but I had a hell of a time keeping my vortex crosshairs on that wolf's chest, but I thumped him. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps. Scree Gear, High Mountain Seasonings, Block Targets, 
Eye Hunter, Glendale Targets, and Deluxe Wall Tents. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Tourism Saskatchewan. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. He definitely has a collar on. He's a collared wolf. And he's huge. Look at that thing. Big male. Look at those paws. And yeah, he's got Spirit track collar on him. That's crazy. We're going to have to talk with Brad. He would know all about that. He's worked with biologists and but look, he's all scars on him. <laughs> it's not like he was growling at me. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pick him up. He's probably, it's got to be a hundred pound wolf or more. It's crazy. And the color is amazing. I've always, always wanted to kill a wolf. To me, the only good wolf is a dead wolf. And I would shoot one this big or 200 pounds, black, purple, white, one, didn't matter. But if I could choose one wolf to kill, this is pretty much exactly it. A giant Northern Alberta male black wolf with scars on his face big freaking mitts on him. Heck of a dog. After only two days into our hunt with Keg Country Outfitters, we managed to connect on a beautiful bull moose and a once in a lifetime wolf. The rest of the week was spent hunting hard and exploring all kinds of area in search of a moose for myself. We managed to cross paths with a few cows earlier in the week, but then ran into some tough weather towards the end. It is raining out there. We were soaked. I uh, didn't have my scree rain jacket on, I had my pants on, but we were way further down the river hunting. The rain started to come. We jumped on the quad and tried to make it back, but we didn't make it in time. And as you can hear, it's coming down pretty good. So we're gonna get everything in here, start the stove up, try and find a way to hang some stuff and start drying for the afternoon. But hopefully this breaks and we can get back out there this evening. If not, we're gonna be hunkered down nice and warm in the deluxe wall tent. When the weather finally broke, we had a short window to get out and try to connect on a mature bull. We passed a young moose along the way and on the final evening of the hunt, we finally found a good bull down along the river. It was the final few minutes of legal shooting light in an area of the river that I didn't know if we could access safely. The shot was further than I was comfortable with, so we made the tough decision to simply watch as he chased his cows across the river and up into the brush. It was one of the coolest moments I've ever witnessed in the moose woods. In the end, we finished the week with my moose tag still folded in my pocket, but only because I chose to. With one minute of legal light, hardly any camera light, it's just not a shot I'm willing to take, even on the second last day. But I tell you what, we got a show.
The week spent in camp with good friends at Keg Country Outfitters was truly a trip that I will forever cherish and is a hunt that I would encourage anybody to check out. Adrian runs a fantastic operation in a fantastic part of the province with some incredible moose kicking around. And I look forward to hopefully chasing moose along that particular stretch of river once again in the future with Adrian and his crew.